listening to the We Are Worship USA podcast. I love it when it's that organic family. Everyone's bringing something. I just at one point made a decision that the kind of worship leader I want to be is one that doesn't really separate the stage and the private times with the Lord. To see Jesus Christ and we're going to worship Him and that's what this whole thing is all about. It's just about Him. Hey everybody, welcome to the We Are Worship podcast. My name is Morgan and today... Like every day, I have wisdom here with me. <laughs> How's it so going, wisdom? So excited to be here. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. I'm glad that we finally got you on the podcast. <laughs> it's taken forever. I know I've been really busy, and I've said no. Yeah. But I'm, I'm here now. Yeah. So. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, What did, I did you do? What did I do? I mowed... Part of my lawn. Part of it. Because <laughs> I have a battery-operated lawnmower, oh, and the battery died because my son didn't charge it all the way last oh, time afterwards. Man. So it was kind of like one of those jobs where you feel unsatisfied because mm-hmm. like, you don't have to get that satisfied feeling of completing a whole mm-hmm. project. Mm-hmm. But It's like when half your yeah. hair is cut and the other half's not. Yeah, because you do that a lot of times. You, yeah. you like shave one side and then the other. Side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I never end up fully bald. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What'd you do this weekend? Um, rest. Rest. Yeah. That's so we good. went to Outcry tour, and oh, then yeah. we went. We went to the night of worship. We had a night of worship. <laughs> See, I'm not even fully here. Um, we had a worship team night with mm. We Are Worship. And so that was Thursday and Friday. So I chose to sleep all weekend, mm. and I got a good 12 hours in one day, yeah. Saturday night. So Yeah, it that's... was funny, because um, yesterday I, I was uh, at my second oldest football game, like flag football, mm-hmm. and I was driving back, uh, driving home, and at the light, I saw you sleeping I was not wheel. sleeping. <laughs> your head was down. So I honked to wake you up because I was just like, that's dangerous. Don't sleep in your car. Yeah. I was probably <laughs> changing the song that I was listening oh, to okay. on Spotify. Uh-huh. But yeah, I have the settings turned on where I can't use my phone while I'm driving. Mm. So I was at a, a stoplight. So if anybody's concerned about my well-being and uh, texting while okay. driving, I'll do that because I can't. So when you have that setting, which I've never tried that setting, mm-hmm. when you're at a light, it lets you use your phone? Well, like it recognizes if you're stopped. So when you're so not moving. So even sometimes though, like your phone now knows where you park. I, mm. I've never, oh, like yeah. I've never had that before until I got a new phone. But like if you get in your car, mm-hmm. it'll even like, you turn your car on and it'll say, do not disturb like your phone will <laughs> stop working because wow. well not stop working but it'll go into like do not disturb mode because it knows that you're in your car fancy so you have to hit like i'm not driving wow yeah, yeah. do yeah. they force that on you or is that like your own choice? you can opt in yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah i just did that just so that like if people are like trying to text me mm. and they know that and i'm driving maybe driving. they'll respect the fact that i'm driving and won't make me text them back so fast no i'm just kidding so anyway, we've got some great things happening at mm. We Are Worship. Like, great. <laughs> like, Tony the Tiger. And um, some of the things are our free songs, which most of you guys know of and you download, which is awesome. So this week we've got While I Wait from Lincoln Brewster. And it's actually from his new album that is coming out this Friday called God of the Impossible. Mm-hmm. And While I Wait is such a good song. Yeah. And I feel like it's something different from Lincoln that yeah. we haven't really gotten in a, in a while. Like, it's super vulnerable. It's super worshipful. And it's just one of those songs that, like, I feel like if you, like, you just kind of need, like, kind of mm-hmm. like an altar call song, but not really. You know, you can play it at the yeah. end of your service. And it's one of those that just, like, you you could honestly, like, break down crying. Because yeah. it's just it just... <laughs> It's very honest. So that one's um, While I Wait from Lincoln. It's so good. You should go download it. And then we have My Soul Longs for Jesus, which was written by Ed Cash, which we're super pumped about because Mm -hmm. Ed's written a lot of really great songs. And this one is the hymn of the month. And it's it's kind of like more modern, like Mm -hmm. a modern hymn. And the lyrics of it are just, it's very singable. Yeah. 
Um, the lyrics are just like, they speak a lot of truth. And then we have our classic song of the week, which is Amazed from Jared Anderson. And this week we have an interview with Ryan Stevenson. And he is a father, a husband, a songwriter, an artist, a former worship pastor on staff at his church. Um, he's written some incredible songs like um, Speak Life, Eye of the Storm, uh, the Gospel, and we talk about his new project, but we also talk about just the church, and mm-hmm. uh, he had some great insights about the local church and worship leaders, and I think some of the things he says might make you at first go, what did he just mm-hmm. <laughs> Did he just really say that? But, you know, I want to encourage you to really, you know, listen to it and be open-minded about it. And I think part of like what we want to really promote on this podcast is being teachable. Yeah. You know, so I think some of the things he says, if we're, you know, I, I grew up in church all my life and my mom's, you know, minister still. And some of the things may kind of shock you when you hear mm-hmm. it. But I think part of uh, being teachable is, you know, when you hear something that could be maybe challenging or you don't, you don't agree with is just really asking God. You know, is this something that you're trying to tell me, you know, and like asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you about the topic. So um, we want to encourage you not to just shut him (laughs) down and, you know, like turn off the podcast because maybe you don't disagree or you don't agree with what he's saying, Mm -hmm. but to really, you know, pray through it. And I think it's really encouraging, refreshing to hear his perspective. And I think it's cool, too, that as an artist, like... He's so passionate about these things. Yeah. Like I think a lot of the time we think like Christian artists, you know, they, they sing and they lead worship mm-hmm. sometimes, but like they actually are very passionate people about mm-hmm. the church. And I yeah. love that he's just so open about it and that he shares that side of him too. Yeah. So if you have any complaints, uh, email Morgan at weareworship.com. <laughs> yep. They'll get forwarded to wisdom. <laughs> Um, Also, before we play the interview, we want to let you know we have some huge news coming on our next episode. Yes. Morgan is... (laughs) Guys, it's been real and it's been fun, but I'm out of here. Just kidding. Yeah, we have uh, big news that we can't announce yet, but on the next episode, we promise that we will let you in on (laughs) the announcement and we'll have some special guests with us um, to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So we're really excited about it. There's some new things coming, and I think you'll really love it. It's going to be good. Today, I am here with Ryan Stevenson. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, sir. It's good to be here. It's great to have you here. And um, like I mentioned before we hit record, I did... A lot of research on who you are. Who is Ryan Stevenson? I like Googled it, you know, because <laughs> I know your songs. Um, but like a lot of times, you know, you hear a song on the radio and you go like, I don't know anything about the person. You know, it's almost like a mystery because yeah. like you could love the song, but then you don't really know like the story behind, totally. you know, that person or that song. So I thought it'd be great to just hear even your journey of, you know, how you got to where you're at and, um, I was listening to an interview you did with a radio station like three years ago, and you were talking about like um, how how um, I guess you wrote "Eye of the Storm" or no, it was uh, "Speak Life" yeah. with Toby Mac, sure. and how that kind of like led to your own music career. And one thing interesting um, I heard is that you were paramedic. Was a paramedic. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us which about is, that. Which is part of my crazy unconventional journey. Yeah. So was that like part of your like career path you're pursuing? Yeah. I mean, you know, in a nutshell, a little bit about my life. You know, I was born and raised in Southern Oregon, in a small, uh, in a small little farming community of mm. about 250 people. Oh wow! So when we're talking about podunk towns, like I really <laughs> come from the podunk. <laughs> Hick town, wow. surrounded by you know farms and and alfalfa fields and you know cattle ranchers. Wow! Um, but nestled in the Pacific Northwest, just beautiful part of the country, mm. you know. And I I kind of I grew up in the church. 
Um, but I'm really a drummer more than anything. I started playing the drums in the third okay. grade. So that was really what I wanted to do. I never, never had any intention of being a songwriter or a singer or a guitar mm. player. Certainly. Uh, when I was 18, my youth pastor swung through my house and threw this guitar in my lap. Like, <laughs> here you go. I just felt like I was supposed to give this to oh, you. Wow. It, it was kind of frustrating because I didn't play guitar and didn't write songs. I didn't sing. And I was just kind of put off like, well, you know, thanks for the guitar, but <laughs> why didn't you come over here with a drum set? You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I want to do. Uh, so I just didn't even play it. I didn't even register until wow. I went to college my freshman year in Eugene, Oregon. Hmm. And all the guys in my dorm played guitar. And huh. so I realized, well, I I have a guitar, so I just <laughs> pick this thing up. And I just started, uh, I just learned how to play. Like, it just clicked. It just made sense. Wow. Like, I could just do it. And because of that, I was able to uh, start writing down and putting to music and to melody all these things that were in my head, all these thoughts and these these things that were in my heart. And and I love to write anyways. And so it was like this perfect combination of being able to write that stuff down, put it to music, and then that just kind of naturally... Mm. I just started writing worship songs wow. early on, just prayers to God. Like, yeah. I don't know that there was necessarily anything corporate about it, but yeah. they were they were just my thoughts that I would that if Jesus were to walk in the room right here, it's what I wanted to mm. say to him. And um, so that was really kind of how I initially got started. Played in a little pop band all through college, um, and then our band was about to get signed to a record deal right out of college. Uh, but the lead singer ended up doing a solo project, mm. so the band just kind of went away. Oh. And so it was kind of that time that I went back to school um, and got a job as a paramedic. Um, Because I originally had gone to college to become a doctor. Oh, wow. But I got in trouble my freshman year of college and almost got kicked out of school. Uh, (laughs) That's a whole other podcast. (laughs) That's another episode. But um, it was just like, I just kind of was all over the place for a little bit. But when I finally started to get my act together, a little bit, I realized, man, I really do love the medical field and that's what I originally wanted to do. Mm. So after all those years, I went back and got my paramedic license uh, in the state of Idaho where my wife is from. Mm. And I'm from Oregon. She's from Idaho. We met in college in Eugene, Oregon. Wow. And after we were married for a year, we moved over to Idaho to be a little closer to her family. Okay. And so kind of everything just... I got my paramedic license over there. I started working as a paramedic and I did that for eight years until I got signed to a record deal. Wow. And but all that time I was leading worship in the church, planning a church, you know, building these really amazing uh just worship settings and like it was just my heartbeat, you know. Mm. So while you were a paramedic, um during that season, did you ever like get bitter or resentful about like not being able to do music full time or, you know, things like that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, when, when we were playing in our college band, I thought for sure, like, okay, this is it. This Mm. is our shot. This is my path. Yeah. And then when that all disintegrated and crumbled in my face, I was super embittered and disillusioned and I held on to a lot of resentment, uh, you know, to our lead singer for a lot of years. I mean, we didn't speak for a while and, hmm. and I just felt like I, I'd, I'd missed my calling. I'd been betrayed and, and I, yeah, I was, I was angry for a long time. Hmm. Um, but I think the Lord, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. looking back, it was like, well, obviously hmm. if I would have gone down that path when I was 21, <laughs> I would, I just know me and I know where I was at that yeah. point in time. And I know where I was emotionally, spiritually, like I would have squandered it. Mm. I would have. I would have made horrible decisions. I would have ruined mm. my life. And um, so I'm just really thankful that the Lord, in His grace, picked me up out of there and has said, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually give you some life experience for the next decade. Wow. And you're gonna learn some things about people, and you're gonna see what real life actually looks like, and you're gonna experience people's." hurt and anguish and loss and addictions mm. and all this stuff. You're going to get your hands in it. Cause I want to see, I want you to just get a good healthy dose of the reality for most people. Mm. And so wow. a paramedic career for all those years woke me up quickly and it changed my life and it gave me an incredible 
an incredible perspective, an incredible sensitivity for people, mm. and a lot of what I do now. And you know, and all of that time, I was planting a church because I only worked two days a week. Oh, okay. So I worked two twenty-four hour shifts back to back. Yeah. So I had five days off every week. Wow. To just do music and to like kind of cultivate my five day weekends. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It was a great... That should be a song, actually. <laughs> that is a great song title. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, the, we could, I could talk a lot about, <laughs> like, the unconventional path and how I got into all this, but in a nutshell, um, there was just a lot of moving parts, and, and mm. it's kind of been all over the place, but the Lord's hand has definitely been just intricately involved in the details. Yeah, I feel like, you know... Um, just having known um, a lot of artists, um, there's a certain amount of like maturity it really takes to be an artist, you know, as a career to really know how to relate to people, you know. And mm-hmm. like I think what you're talking about during that season, God was really teaching you about people and like giving you that maturity, you know, to be able to relate to people. And I mean. I think a lot of people, you know, hear artists on radio and, and you know, now like streaming and YouTube and things like that. And they don't really see the pressure even that goes, you know, that it goes into the career, you know, mm-hmm. side of like being an artist and the yeah, touring side. Totally. It, it really takes a toll on you, you know, and if you're, if you don't have that maturity, even spiritually, you know, it can really like knock you out and you can get burned out. Um, so I think those seasons, even if you're not, not an artist and you're a worship pastor or whatever, like we all need those seasons where God's shaping us, you know? And I think what you said about like learning to really understand people's hurts, you know, I think that's huge. And the pain that people go through, like we actually talk about that a lot on our podcast Um, and have people come and share about their sufferings and loss and how, you know, that's a part of our journey is, you know, like, holding on to that faith, you know, during mm-hmm. those um, times in our lives. So you have a new album um, called No Matter What. It's nine tracks, right? Yeah. So I didn't know if, like, you call that an album or an EP or... I don't even know what we call <laughs> Or an LP. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so there's some great songs on there. The Gospel is awesome. Uh, Faithful, which features Amy Grant, is an awesome song. And I wanted to read this chorus um, because I want to point something out. Um, So the chorus of Faithful says, Find me faithful even when I'm the only one who stands and doesn't run to the arms of idols. Find me faithful even when I lose the will to fight. Let your spirit come alive and bring revival. Um, Lord, you don't need to find me on the stage. Just find me faithful. Man, that's so powerful. <laughs> and I've realized listening to your songs and really paying attention, a lot of your songs are actually prayers, They're like you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. And this is such a powerful prayer when you actually sit down and like think about what you're actually asking God, like bring revival. You know, I don't need to be on the stage. Mm-hmm. So how do you balance that prayer with going out with Toby Mac and you know being on the big stage? You know, is there ever that struggle or, you know? Yeah. You know, I think I've kind of, I'm kind of coming to a point where I'm, I'm really truly trying to learn to live inside of the grace that I've been given for today Mm. and not trying to future trip about things that are not even real yet or things that may never happen. I'm trying not to live in the past. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, spend all my time living where I'm at today Mm. and being present with the people who are around me. And, you know, I think sometimes finding that balance of, of, you know, the tension of wanting to just have that postured heart of Lord, it's just me and you and whatever you want to do. But then having the, having the temptation to be out, you know, in front of 14,000 people every night Mm. in, in an arena to, for me, it's just different because I lived so much life before all of this. Yeah, Like I've lived on the other side of the valley for so long mm. that, that now any success and any opportunity I see is such a gift. Like mm. it's just so precious to me. It's yeah. such a, I'm so grateful for all of it because I spent years, you know, scraping bodies off the freeway. Wow. And so now like playing music is is such a special thing. Yeah. So I, 
I guess maybe I'm an isolated case, but it's, I guess it's, it's probably a little bit easier for me to sift through all the garbage and all the temptation and all the balance and la 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 la, all the flexing mm. and angling of relationships or whatever. Yeah. And just to say, Jesus, thank you for every moment of this because I know you're present, you're with me, you're in everything that I'm doing. And because I know, because I'm secure in that, I don't need to compromise who I am or what I say, whatever environment mm. that is. Yeah. Man, that's really good. <laughs> I think that can transfer in like any you know part of life and like whatever our job may be, you know, that we do full time. Um, another song that like personally I uh, just love that you wrote um, is called "Speak Life" because <laughs> I teach. I have four kids. I teach my kids all the time. Like your words are so powerful, you know, mm-hmm. and. I got to show uh, Toby Mac's music video of, you know, Speak Life. And that's a powerful visualization of the song. And uh, I mean, it's obviously a scripture, you know, to speak life. And a lot of times I think we forget the power of our words, you know, and even like looking at your songs, what you're proclaiming and praying, you know, through these songs, it gives life and hope and it's really powerful, you know. And I think, you know, we can, especially in our society, in the Western culture, we can be ungrateful, <laughs> you know, um, and take things for granted and speak negativity or, you know, have a more of a negative attitude about life because, you know, we feel entitled or whatever, you know. Um, so talk to us about that, like about speaking life in every situation, because obviously that was that was a passion of yours. That was a message of yours. You know? Yeah, definitely. And you know, when, when I was writing speak life, it, the, that song is birthed. I mean, the ground level ground zero of that song was birthed right out of it. a really ugly church split. Mm, wow. <laughs> and I've been in the church my entire life and I didn't know that. I didn't know a church split was even a thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, what do you mean everybody hates one another? Everybody's <laughs> leaving. Like, I've never seen that. And it was like all of a sudden, our home church, everybody on one side of the room kind of sided with everybody on the other side mm. of the room. And there was just looking back, there was not one real actual thing. Uh. It was just what happens when rumors and whispering and gossip takes place mm. and it gives life, it gives birth to a vicious monstrous thing that infects it's like a cancer wow. but it's not even there and yeah. the lord really convicted me in that time you know i'm not i'm not innocent by any means yeah. and and the lord just really got a hold of me during that time I was like now don't you see the power of words wow and i was reading in proverbs right then at that time and it's proverbs 18 my paraphrase of course says our words, we do one of two things. We either bring life or we bring death. Mm. There's no gray area. There's no yeah. in between. There's no neutral exchange ever. Every interaction that we have with anyone, we're either offering life or we're draining it from wow. them. And so Speak Life was born literally out of the the aftermath of what happens when our our flesh and our humanity and our ugliness gets in the way and our selfishness really, yeah. and we start talking trash and we start judging and sitting in the judgment seat with one another and it it just divides yeah and there's we will never know we may never know the impact of what even sometimes our tone might mean to somebody Mm. we don't know where people are at any given moment we don't know what's going we're all so intricately and wonderfully and fearfully made and crafted that we're all so individual we don't know what somebody might be experiencing in their emotions or Mm. in their heart or in their head at any given moment. So just a tone or a, some kind of off the cuff joke or Mm. a snap or anything might wreck somebody's world and have long term effects. Yeah. And so I guess I've just learned, uh, and I'm not always great at it, but I've just started to learn how, when we say things to people, it's it could be a loaded weapon. It mm-hmm. could have devastating effects to people. And so 
we just really should just focus on saying, let the Bible even says that don't let anything come out of your mouth that is not edifying, mm-hmm. that is not building people up, that is not out of love. Yeah. And it's there's there's definitely a reason that that's in the word yeah. because it's it's true. You can do it for the good or for the bad. Yeah, man, I can so relate to that because. I actually uh, was born in Korea, moved to the U.S. when I was nine, didn't speak any English. I looked totally different. <laughs> My school had like no Asian kids, you know, <laughs> and every day I would go to school and get made fun of. And to this day, like some of those things come back to haunt me totally. and like haunt my self-esteem and yeah. That's why I like always try to instill in my kids, like even when they're making fun of themselves or like saying like, oh, I'm stupid or like, don't ever say say that that. you're stupid because your words are powerful. And, you know, like I always try to tell them like, don't speak mean things to your siblings or, you know, other kids um, at school, even if they do it to you, Mm -hmm. like you, you don't replicate that, you know, to them. So, yeah, that's um, such a powerful reminder, I think, of like, the words that we speak, you know, especially, you know, a lot of our listeners are worship leaders, you know, they're on the stage every Sunday. And like, I always try to be mindful of like what I say, you know, when I have a mic in front of me, just like I do now, (laughs) whether it's like at a church or on a podcast, um, but really being intentional about what you say, you know, Um, I think that's huge. Like that's such a great reminder because it's easy to forget that, you know, You know, talking about worship, worshiping and worship leaders, and if I could just say something in there, I guess one thing that really helped start to set me free was when I started to realize the fact that we are all just people, mm-hmm. regardless of the title or the lettering we wear after yeah. our name, or whether we call ourselves a worship leader or an associate pastor, or whatever, we're all just people. Yeah. And... Um, it took me a long time. It took me a long time to really understand that, but there, we need to know inherently as human beings, we need to know that other people struggle too. Mm. The times that I've been set free the most in my life from addictions and bondage and temptations and, and, and all that stuff is when I've heard other men and women around me confess and Mm. be free and vulnerable i vulnerability i believe is the key Mm. and yeah like i just think that as worshipers you know look at look at david Mm -hmm. the psalms the psalms were written and birthed from places of just devastation and fear yeah and they're just all prayers birthed right out of fear and being hunted down and persecuted and trying to be killed and uh-huh. and adultery and and the darkest aspects of what makes humans humans. David uh-huh. was praying through those songs. And so I think that one of the most powerful things you can do as a worshiper is to not just not just sing your songs, but there's a certain amount, there's a certain environment that's created when you're when you're vulnerable. Mm in those settings as well. People yeah. need to hear that. Yeah. I love uh, what you said. And that actually makes me think of uh, something I saw re- recently on social media, perfection versus excellence, mm-hmm. especially like, I think churches struggle with this, you know, like the pressure from the pastor to the worship team to have this like perfect, you know, worship set, the perfect sound. And like, I would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, perfection when you're leading worship um, versus excellence. And I know there's, this is like a hot topic I know, among worship leaders and there's a lot of, you know, uh, disagreements about it too. I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. <laughs> Honestly, there's people all around the world with getting their heads chopped off and being drug around the streets and being burned inside cages just for owning a Bible. Mm -hmm. That's a reality. Yeah. Here in this country, we're so privileged. We have Mm -hmm. it so good that I feel like a major part of it, we've lost so much sight of what's actually real and life giving. Mm. And I feel like, you know, I was down in Central America one time and I looked out in this grungy old field and I saw these people standing under a tree with nothing, just family standing under a tree. And I was like, hey, what are those guys doing out there? 
I was like, well, that's that's church it's Sunday morning. Wow. I'm like, wait a minute. They just <laughs> that's where they meet, and it just wow. it just woke me up, dude. Like that's church, and that's community, and that's. They don't need lights. They don't need smoke machines. They are they are meeting. The Lord is closer to their heart. They have the heart of the Father standing under a tree in the middle of a rainforest than, than us up here striving with lasers and smoke machines and all mm. this stuff and the politics that go in that just keep drowning out and creating this ugly thing. Mm. I feel like we've moved so far away from the heart of God. And I and I'm wow. never going to apologize for saying that. I've been in the church my whole life and I've been in many mega churches across the country and I'm not been out of shape with any of them. I'm just saying yeah. from my own personal experience and my own conviction in my heart of what the Lord just continues to whisper in my heart it's not about performance. Hmm. It's about a broken, contrite, postured heart to the Lord oh. that is loving on other people. Well, you just dropped a bomb. <laughs> if you have any uh, thoughts or complaints, <laughs> go to ryanstevenson.com. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I'm sorry. Guys. No, I love that. I love that you actually are willing to say that out loud because i think we all need to hear that um and i think that goes back to your song faithful you know like bringing revival and being faithful to what we're called to and not striving for you know the flashy things so i read a quote the other day this, sorry sorry to beat a dead horse here <laughs> i read a quote the other day that said there's 16 prospering church models right now in America, and mm. not one of them is based on the book of Acts. They're wow. all based on franchise business models. Wow. And that was super disheartening to me. Mm. And again, to go back to what I stated earlier, it's if if we're not being authentic and meeting the needs of our of our local community with just being who we are and and not worrying about sustaining a congregation mm -hmm. because we got this big building and we're motivated by fear because of finances and all the stuff that goes into that mm. it's we we're just we're chasing an uphill battle we're fighting an uphill battle that i just don't believe the lord's in anyway wow Man, I feel like God's gonna really use this podcast and to really like speak to some, you know, of our listeners. And I mean, I feel convicted. <laughs> so. I, I promise, like you guys, anybody who's listening, I, I'm not on my high horse. I promise, I don't have a chip <laughs> on my shoulder. I say that in all, I say that in all compassion and grace and humility because I have I've been guilty mm. of wanting to build that system. Yeah. I have I used to strive to build yeah. that kind of environment and when and when the Lord shook me to my core and opened my eyes to the reality of it's mm. not about that it changed my entire world. Wow. Man. I think this is a good time to pray like if you wouldn't mind praying for the you know worship leaders listening and whatever God puts on your heart and then we can close it out. Definitely. Jesus, you're so good even when we're not. And we're so thankful every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I thank you that we don't have a performance-based relationship with you. Mm -hmm. That we're sons and daughters of the king, that we're precious, that we're chosen, that we can just take it easy and be still and know that you are God and that you delight in us, that you're not moody, that you're not displeased, that you're a father who's compassionate and tender and gracious, abounding in love, that just loves us right where we are and is never asking us to strive or maintain anything. Lord, I pray that we would all come to a place right now where we just rest and we just listen to your heartbeat, that we don't look to the right or to the left, we don't get... Uh, pressured or coerced by any agenda of any entity or any leader that we are just secure knowing that you are the one steering our ship, hmm. that you are the one we listen to, that you are the one that we 
are ultimately accountable to. God, just give us that boldness today. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would just flow out when we just sing to you, that when we just operate out of out of complete humility, God, that you would be strong in our weakness, Lord. Hmm. Thank you for loving us even when we don't do and say the right thing. We never get it all together. Thank you that you're there even in the midst of the darkest moments of our lives, and we don't have to hide from you. Hmm. We love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being on the podcast and being real. <laughs> we need that <laughs> in our lives. Uh, and I want to encourage our listeners to check out, no matter what, the EP, album, LP, whatever yeah. it might be considered. <laughs> uh, it's some great songs on there. So. Thank you. Thanks for listening to We Are Worship. We would love to hear from you. You can email us your comments to hello at weareworshipusa.com. And don't forget to visit us online at weareworship.com for more resources and links to connect with us on your favorite social media platforms.